going to, um, at a certain point, I will pause to show you a slide that will show how you can access the lesson through OC Grace and also access the lesson from YouTube where you can send this slide to friends and others as one of your personal outreach to build up the kingdom of God and to enhance the spiritual growth of members of the church and your friends and family. So you can send this out. I'm going to work on it this week. Send it to you and we can send it out to others and the, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. So at, um, at this time, we will have the opening prayer. Um, no, not the opening prayer. We're going to have the opening hymn and then the opening prayer will be given by our birthday boy, 89 years young, Thank celebrated, you. Verda Brown celebrated his 89th birthday just recently. Amen. Yes, yes. Birthday. And Yeah. And if you have any presents uh, for him, send it through me, you know, and I will. <laughs> we leave the name on the check blank. <laughs> yes, yes, please, please. <laughs> yeah, so it, it is. Now, who is this that's having this 89th birthday? The brother Brown. Yes, sir. Oh, really? Robert, you don't look like you're that old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, congratulations again, brother Brown. And um, at this time, we will have the opening song. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is so powerful. Oh, my goodness. Let us have the opening song. Let's have the opening prayer, please. Dear Father, which art in heaven, as we come before you this morning, we come giving you thanks for all your many blessings. It is so wonderful to hear the, the teacher say that he's been blessed this week from studying your word. And we know now that as he presents them to us and the studying that we have done, that when we leave this meeting today, we will be able to say that I know that I have been in the presence of the Lord. So we want to thank you now for what we're going to find out. We're going to thank you for what it will be said. We want to thank you for those that are sick and maybe wanting some comfort. And hopefully that the comfort will be there for them. So we thank you, dear Father. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Y you know, um, Robert, you look good. I that hope is... I look that good when I'm 89. <laughs> well, no, I take that back. I hope I make it to 89. <laughs> thank, thank the Lord for and, and for his ministry as a leader in the church for years. And, and he continues to visit members and the sick ones and so forth. So we are, we are, we are so glad to have individuals like these with us and to worship with us and when we open church again to worship with us in the sanctuary this morning you 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 have listened to a beautiful hymn an old time hymn that you will i will go back to at the close of the lesson each time i listen to this hymn or i i read it i tears are boiled up in my eyes to know and to have that hope and that confidence that Christ will and is redeeming us. Doing the, unthink the unthinkable is the topic of our lesson this morning. And the memory verse is one that we, we have heard sermons preach on this topic before or this text before. We have read it before, we can repeat it by heart. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. The picture to the right hand corner of this slide gives you an idea, but just a caption of what Jesus went through and that Isaiah prophesied of in his book to Israel and also prophesied for us today and will prophesy for those after us. Here we're going to start with the lesson this morning with from the pen of inspiration, God's amazing grace, page 172. What a price has been paid for us. Behold the cross, the victim uplifted upon it. Look at those hands, pierced with cruel nails. Look at his feet, fastened with spikes to the tree. Christ bore our sins on his own body. That suffering, that agony, is the price of our redemption. Isaiah's, Isaiah, the gospel prophet, foretold the crucifixion with amazing accuracy in the, the suffering servant poem of Isaiah chapter two, 52, verse 13 to 53. Verses 11, 12. We are going to look at, again, some subheadings. Disparaging manner, a disparaging manner that you will find in Isaiah chapter 50. You will find from exalt, exaltation to the cross, from the cross to exaltation in chapter 52. The suffering servant, 
the innocent sufferers, chapter 52. The suffer, he suffered for me, chapter 53. And continuing in chapter 53, sin, death, and resurrection. Oh, this peering, disparaging manner. I saw, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. This prophecy was fulfilled in a remarkable way, open lit that hundreds and thousands could see and even millions ever since on the road to Galgotha. It came visibly before those who rejected him. His appearance was so disfigured, he could not be recognized as one of the son of men. Not the son of God now, but even the, son, the sons of men. The synoptic, synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, describe the factors that marred Jesus' appearance. Includes scourging, a cross of thorns, crucifixion, but above all, bearing the weight of the sins of the human race past and present. It is because of the love of the entire Godhead that the Messiah sent from God would choose to suffer. He would choose to suffer in order to reach the unreachable. And who is the unreachable? Mm -hmm. Us. Then those who rejected him who disobeyed and rebelled against him and us today who are doing the same thing. The unreachable God shed his blood to reach us. The crucified Lord, surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. God smites his son and out for, out for us on our behalf. Having told the story of the birth, identity, and career of God's deliverer, Isaiah finally reveals the supreme tragedy that gives us hope. And you're going to see that hope this morning. That gives us hope to reach, save, and heal lost people, including us. God's servant voluntarily bears our suffering and punishment. Look at, look at the pictures. You have seen pictures like these before. The weight, the guilt, the punishment for the sins of the whole world. Every sin, every sinner fell upon Christ at the cross at once as the only means to save us. Yet, all this was God's will. Isaiah 53 and verse 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So Isaiah saw Christ on the cross. Isaiah saw his suffering in vision. What that would look like. Why? Because Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians chapter 3, 13, verses 13 and 14. The crown of shame belongs to us. 
we should be wearing that crown of shame, but he wore it for us instead. What else could he have done? What does it tell us about God's love that he would do this for us, even at such great a cost? Here is your turn to respond to this question. What does it mean to you that he had to go through all of this? Anyone want, would like to start out our discussion this morning? Uh, good morning. This is Gilbert. Yes, Gilbert. Yes. So, uh, you know, every time we read the Bible, we learn something new. Uh, again, again, we're surprised for uh, because of what we read, yes. and uh, we know that the uh, that uh, how the Lord suffered and how what we did to Him, uh, the the torture we did to Him. But one thing that I did not know, another detail that I did not know, and that I read in Isaiah, is that His uh, his beard was flapped out. Mm -hmm. It was, mm -hmm. his beard was pulled out. Uh, and at the same time that he says he, he does not hide his face from shame. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, not only that we torture him, not only did he die for our sins, but we, we humiliate, we humiliate him. Uh, it is just uh, it's just uh incredible it's just incredible for the uh the amount of uh pain and suffering that uh, that that we as human beings can can inflict upon upon other people yes 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 someone else l let's hear from you uh, uh, you can't be silent when you when you know what he went through, as Gilbert is saying, can you imagine just plucking out the long hair from his beard? Can you imagine somebody spitting on you? Can you, can you imagine that? While carrying a cross of wood, weighing so many pounds, after being scourged, whipped, it is unimaginable that uh, uh, um, Gilbert used the word. It is it is 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 beyond our comprehension. What about you? Does it does this have an impact on the way you and I should live? You know, another thing I'd like to say is that. What uh, what the uh, sin? What's the effect of sin in us? What it does, it it separates us from God, and uh, it does not. Our sin does not allow us to see God. And uh, remember, as he was in the cross, and he cried out to God. He said, "My God, my God, what have you? Why have you forsaken me?" Yes, yes, and yes, it's, yes, yes. It's in that point that he felt the weight. That he felt all the weight of the sin upon him as though it was his own sin mm. that he could not see God anymore. That is why he cried. That is why he cried. It created that separation that he could not see God anymore at that point. Yes, yes. Let, for let us. Me... And he did this for us. He suffered this for us. Yes, yes. Since no one else is, is contributing... Yes, uh, go ahead, Brother Brown. What, you know, what really bothers me is how that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but we never can really accept Jesus Christ as our Savior because we seem to always cater towards sin. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and the only way we will have life is through Jesus Christ. Yes. He have, he have all the sin over there someplace else. And he's taken ours away, but we hadn't still, we seem to want to follow the sin rather than follow life. 
And it yes. really, uh, sometimes my heart just breaks because of how we as human beings have a father that we pray to every day, but yet and still we won't follow him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Everything what he has done for us, I think we should uh, thank him every moment of the day. Uh -huh. I don't think anybody in our lives will do anything like that. Sometimes maybe we do say things about uh, people, but if we are not ready to die for them, maybe we should make any comments. Yes, so, uh, you know, he did over, uh, I can even explain, you know, um, the no, like, I, like I said, the nobody will do something for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, he deserves to be praised and worshipped uh, daily uh, for what he done for us. And, Amen. Uh, Amen. Thank you more for every moment of the life he gives. Yes, yes. You know, let me mention this. Um, Gilbert came to mention this little part, and it's, it, it might appear to be simple, but it is profound. Have you ever wondered why, what it would look like, how you would feel that you are not able to see your children, mm -hmm. hmm? your grandchildren? Hmm? Just something simple. God who was with God the Father and the Spirit throughout eternity could not see God. And then as Gilbert said, that is possibly not only the physical pain, but the psychological and the emotional pain cut off from God the Father, not knowing if he would come up from the grave, isolated, what agony, psychological agony that was. So he bore it all for us. So we cannot continue. We cannot continue to hug sin. We cannot continue to, to just be lackadaisical about our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me pause here now. And we will pause the recording at this time. Um, this is the way to access the lesson through OC Grace. And this is the way to have individuals do it as simple as possible. When we're putting this together, I said to Marlene, put it together and make the steps for novice like me. <laughs> So, so it can be easily, make it simple. You go to OC Grace, ocgrace.com. You roll down to, you will see the, um, it right away, something will pop up in uh, different colors. They, they change the colors from time to time. But a screen will, will just pop up before you. You scroll down to Sabbath School on the website page. You click on Sabbath School, Derek Evans. You will see other Sabbath School listed there. You click on the Sabbath School that you are going to um, attend. Derek Evans, that is the one that we are in right now. This link will take you to Zoom automatically without any numbers or uh, something that you have to enter. Click on Open Zoom Meetings. Up in the right-hand corner or so forth, it will be up there. Open Zoom meetings and wait to be admitted. We will see that you're coming on um, and you, we will uh, admit you. Now, to access the Sabbath School recordings on YouTube, you open a new tab. Then you do, uh, you copy it, which is CTRL plus C for copying. Then it will, you, it will show you paste. You paste this link on your, on your browser and the link is right there. After a while, you're not going to see this lengthy um, link. It will shorten itself after you have practiced to do that. Then you click on the lesson you wish 
to view. And they are all listed there. You can go over them and so forth. I, um, for my edification and to improve on the presentations, I, again, on Sabbath evenings or uh, sometimes in the week, I will go through it to listen to. So this is the simple way to access it, to show it to others. We are going to send you a slide um, this week, uh, an invitation slide that you can send through text, through WhatsApp, or through um, email to your friends. It would be worth it if even only one person comes to Jesus Christ. If only one person in the church, this can enhance their spiritual growth, it will be worth it. Now we are going to begin. Gary, to, before you go yes. any further, can you post that in chat so that we can see it? Because that's a lot to copy. All right. Um, can you post it some way in chat or email right. it to us later on? We, we would have to take a picture of it. Oh, you, they could take a picture by their phone. Uh, I don't have my phone with me. I don't All right. Turn okay. Like so we, 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 yes, we'll try. Um, Valerie, are you able to put that on chat? Yeah, well, I'm in. Yes, chat. We, we will be able to do that. All right, good. So you, you want me to, uh, what I will do, I will sort of leave this up um, to the end also that will give you time to be able to do that. Or if, or in the process, we can do that, okay? All right, we will begin the, uh, the recording again. From exaltation to the cross and from the cross to exaltation, from exaltation to the cross, and from the cross to exaltation. Uh, we are going to begin at the left-hand side of this, your screen now, Isaiah 52 and verse 13, the servant is exalted. Isaiah 52 verses 14 through 15, his humiliation is foretold. Isaiah 53 and, verses one, and verse 1, who would believe? Isaiah chapter 53, verses 2 through 3, he is despised. Verses 4 through 6, he suffers for us. Oh, Isaiah 53, verses 7 through 9. Despite, despised, be, despite being innocent, he is condemned and dies. And the last, it says Isaiah 53, 10 through 11 to 12, the servant is exalted. You will also find this has been confirmed by Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. He suffered for me. Oh, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Going back to the member verse, God gave us a child, a prince of peace. However, they went to war against him. Is that war still continuing today in our society against Christ yes. and his values and his expectations? War against Christ in society and even war against Christ and the attitude of Christ within the church. The war continues. He was a judge for no reason. He was condemned like a criminal although he had never sinned and he was mistreated. Oh, I gave Isaiah chapter 50 and verse six. I read this again. 
I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. What an amazing, unthinkable sacrifice. Jesus endured to reach you and me and all the world steeped and lost in the abyss of sin. Who was the enemy? Who did this? The answer to this serious question is clear and painful. We all did. And if we continue to cherish sin, to enjoy sin, we are doing that all the time. It is a continuous process we are engaged in. If it had not been, been for the mercies of God. Sin, death, and resurrection. He said, when you make his soul an offering for sin, you shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Every transgression, that means every sin, against God and other people had to be expiated, atoned for. If required, the victim had to, to be compensated. In any case, a sacrifice must be offered. An innocent animal had to die in the offender's place. When sacrifices took place in the ceremonial ceremonies, that is what happened. A sacrifice had to take place. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, he offered himself to expiate, to atone for our sins. He died so we can be free from eternal death and we can inherit eternal life. He died so we can receive righteousness. His cloak of righteousness can cover us. Oh, his resurrection guarantees our own resurrection in Jesus Christ. When we are, we are the seed, the labor of his soul. Believe this message. And the supreme sacrifice of Jesus will be worth it all. He will feel satisfied when he will see us entering the gates of the new Jerusalem. Let us not just speak about it, but to dream about it, but connect with Jesus Christ as he guarantees this in our lives on a daily basis. We're going to have the scripture reading now from Philippians chapter five, verse, uh, Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Mm. that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. amen. Let us all say amen to the scripture reading. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Christine. Christine. Um, so beautifully done. Ah, what can I say? Therefore, God highly exalted him. Hmm? That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, 
on the unfallen worlds and of those on earth and under the earth that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is God to the glory of God the Father. These are the texts that should, that, these are the texts that just give me comfort. How, how about you? I, I just hope that is the case with you. Ah, oh Lord, have mercy on us as your children. What I get out of that, if I can yes. share it real quick, please, is that even, you know, and I think that one of the most powerful parts of that is that every knee will bow those in heaven, mm -hmm. those on the earth, and those under the earth. So it means mm -hmm. that the devil's going to be on his knee. Yes, sir. And at least that's what I perceive. And yes. uh, I think that is, is such a huge thing mm -hmm. that uh, Christ is ultimate. And, you know, I've always wondered because he always knew the beginning from the end. But nevertheless, he went through us, went through this for us, even knowing what was going to happen. Yes. And the devil, who knows what ultimately is going to happen, still keeps nipping at our heels all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nipping at the heels and he's not going to go anywhere mm -hmm. yes sir thank you yeah, also I, I, another thing yeah yes. another thing i guess uh, i would like to say when it's also when it says under the all those under the earth it also gives hope um to the people who are sick or the people who are dying then even after death there's going to be hope that yes. you're going to be brought back and and also so that you can also uh, praise God. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you see, see, you see, he, those in heaven is going to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and God. Those who crucified him. Ah, yes, yeah. And Satan himself, even satanic angels, will finally said, he is Lord and God. That will be a celebration that will, the heart of God is going to burst with thanksgiving that his death was worth it. You're going to see, Ray, in a passage from the Spirit of Prophecy, when, how, why did he volunteer? How? And you can see, you'll see that shortly. Oh, let us look here now. The innocent suffers. Why good people suffer? The, 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 it, will, it, will, it will come to you right now. Who has believed our report is a question mark. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? We found in Isaiah 49 and verse 7 that God's servant is despised, ab 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 abhorred, and the serve and the slave of rulers. This servant, Jesus, was blameless, but he suffered. Isaiah 52, verses 2 through 13 says, the servant is exalted and vindicated in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, that was just read for us, where Jesus begins in the form of God, but descends by emptying himself to take on the bondage of human form, humbling himself down to death and the lowest of all death, the death on the cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him so that everyone can acknowledge him as Lord. And I let me add the word as Lord and God. Followers of Jesus, children of God, Righteous ones also suffer. Why? Listen to this. Selected message, book one, page 111. It is by suffering that our virtues are tested and our faith tried. It is in the day of troubles that we feel the preciousness of Christ. You will be given opportunity to say, though 
he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job 13 and verse 15. Oh, it is so precious to think of the opportunities we are afforded us to confess our faith in the face of danger, amid sorrow, sickness, pain, and death. Even under all of these circumstances, we can still give acknowledgement to our faith that God is love, God is faithful, God is merciful, and I am a child of God. Here we, come, we are in another interactive session. I have a question down there, but we do not even have to react to the question. What else can you contribute to someone who is listening? What else can you contribute to someone who will listen this week? Well, Christ came to ransom our soul. Yes. He came to, he, he died for our in, iniquities. Yes. He, he, can, he can save every soul that confesses her sins and turn to him. Every soul can have this. Mm. And it, it's free. Yes. And he died for us. He died a horrible death. I, I saw a movie, and not to bring something up, but I saw a movie called Passions of the Christ, mm -hmm. which have me on my knees. I mean, to see what it went through in the movie, it was probably 10,000 times worse than that in real life for people that actually saw it. But, uh, you know, Satan assaulted Christ with this. He came, you know, he provoked no retaliation in any way, shape, or form. Jesus didn't. And yet everything was rained down upon him for us. So, I mean, I don't know how you thank him for that other than praise him and give him your soul and give him your, your heart. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the idea, you, you have answered your own question. How can I praise, how can I thank him? Is by praising and giving your life to him. But may I add one more? Help someone else to reach out to Jesus Christ. Help someone else. Yes, I just want to, yeah, there say something. Uh, yes. We're in a better situation. We can tell the people than Christ. If we sin, we have somebody to forgive us. Mm -hmm. If he has sinned, the plan of salvation will be compromised and ruined. Yes. So, Sometimes people think, oh, I'm a big sinner. I don't think I deserve anything. You know, we need to encourage people that we are in a better situation. We just need to admit our sin. And like a, I always say, like a Ray said, you know, that we should admit and the, our sins and that and he will forgive us. Yes. yes. May, may I share something what happened to me? So... So we, we have to um, realize this, that we cannot continue to embrace sin. And the individuals will say, oh, it's the weakness of the flesh. And you have the excuses that go on and on. Mariana was about to say. I, I okay. have had with Bob in the nature. Now I can't see my screen to turn on video. Uh, this is... Uh, I like to sh uh, just mention that all these stories are for not just for us to think how something was good done to us, but also that how God, how, how Jesus was uh, responding to treatment of his. On a Monday lesson we have here in the middle sentence, if you, ins if you insulted and mistreated someone like this, you'd better be well protected. If they got half a chance, the victim and or his clan would surely retaliate. The question is for us, how we feel, what do we think when we are mistreated and we are um, simply bad mounted or, or given uh, damage or whatever it is, what do we do? It happened to us once. There was once a guy who 
sued with Pastor Dan, our church, our conference, my husband and me. And for two years, we have to go through um, no retaliation, just prayer, uh, fasting, and everything turned out good. But those two years were very hard because, and that's when I identified first time in my life, that was just 1%. 1% of what Jesus went through, not even 1%, 0, 0, 0. 0.1 about mistrust. And that's the time when I studied more than ever about his life and Desire of Age book and Isaiah and everything. But now speaking of Desire of Age, I just want to encourage everyone to come on board. We have now 90 day challenge with Pastor David Ashrick. Every day we read one chapter of Desire of Ages. We are now on chapter 12, I believe. And uh, in each morning from seven to eight, he's in Colorado time zone. We discussed this morning, we were so blessed for hour and a half because somehow his Facebook was turned off and he went on a, another, another platform. The devil is working overtime to distract of his word. So I'm just saying, I wish that everyone goes on board and reads one chapter, Desire of Age or Christ's character. Today, we were talking about his 40 days of fasting, how devil tempted him unbelievable story and this morning from 7 to 8 8 30 i was there with other seven eight i don't know thousand people around the world around america what i'm saying is is we are not only learning oh how great christ is to us we are supposed to learn how we treat those who mistreat us that is true christ-like neck that is true christianity otherwise we are just uh, babbling words from the bible amen let us. Um, I have a request, if I may. Can you yes. go back to the previous screen so I can see that uh, quote from Hope? From oh, the book of Hope. Can you go back to the previous screen from there? There you, you go. go. Thank you. I'm just going to take a picture of that really fast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and. Um... Got it. Thank you. So we are going to. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And the question, why why did Christ um, reveal himself through us as a servant? He could come as a king. And, uh, you know, riches and popularity and all of that. But he came as a servant. For me, it is that we too can know what it, it is to serve others. So we too, as God's children, can know what it is to humble ourselves, wrap up our pride, leave it at home, put it away someplace, leave it in the car, leave it out wherever it might be, and humble ourselves so others can be drawn to the cross and to the Lamb of God. Ray, can you read this? from Steps to Christ for us. The heart, the heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his son, he has poured out to us all heaven in one gift, the Savior's life and death and intercession, the ministry of angels, the pleading of the Spirit, the Father working above and through all, the unceasing interest of heavenly beings, all are enlisted in behalf of man's redemption. Oh, Ray, hold on there for a minute. Hold on there for a minute. Um, read this again. I, I, am I hearing it correctly? Roy, Roy, sorry. Am I hearing correctly that it says all heaven, if all angels, read that, read that part there for me again. All the, all the unceasing interests of heavenly beings, yeah. all are enlisted in behalf of man's redemption. Oh, man. Continue, sir. Oh, let us contemplate the amazing sacrifice that has been made for us. Let us try to appreciate the labor and energy that heaven is expending to reclaim the lost and bring them back to the Father's house. Mm. Motives stronger and agencies more powerful could never be brought into operation. 
the exceeding rewards for right doing, the enjoyment of heaven, the society of the angels, the communion and love of God and his son, the elevation and extension of all powers throughout eternal ages. Are these not mighty incentives and encouragements to urge us to give the heart's loving service to our creator and redeemer? Steps to Christ, page 21. Ah, uh, yes. Wow. Motives stronger and agencies more powerful could never be brought into operation. The exceeding rewards for right doing, living right, living righteously. The enjoyment of heaven, the society of angels, the communion and the love of God and his son, the elevation and extension of all our powers through eternal ages. That is what is available to us. You call this imputed righteousness. Righteousness that you did not deserve and you do not deserve. But when you go to Christ and ask him forgiveness, he forgives you and he places his robe of righteousness over you. That God does not see your weaknesses and your sin, God the Father, but he sees us through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is what you call imputed righteousness. That is where she was Hallelujah. coming from. Amen. Praise God. The suffering servant, part one. In following the overall courses of the Messiah's life on earth, the prophet started with his conception and birth, introduced his identity as, the, as a divine divinic king. Elaborate on his work of restoration for Israel. Reveal his quiet ministry and liberation from injustice and suffering. Then Isaiah concluded with the Messiah's grand drama of suffering, crucifixion, death, resurrection, and praise God, exaltation. This uh, deserves ages page 22 and 23. This was a voluntary sacrifice. Jesus might have remained at the Father's side. He might have retained the glory of heaven and the homage of angels. But he chose to give back the scepter into the Father's hands and to step down from the throne of the universe. And he that he might bring light to the belighted and the life to the perishing. Oh, what a God we serve. Serving the, the, the suffering servant part two. Look at Isaiah chapter 53 again from this vantage point. Isaiah 53, the verses two and three, begins a painful descent from the servant's original and ordinary appearance to sorrow and rejection. Verses four through six pauses to explain his suffering is really our punishment, which he bears to heal us. Verses seven through nine, continues the innocent servant's descent to the grave. Verses 10 through 12, the servant ascent to the exalted reward foreseen at the beginning of this chapter, which is known as the servant this suffering poem. Starting in Isaiah 52 now, verses 13, there is an added insight that his sacrifice is to save others. And this is, was, and this is the will of God. 
And so I take you to that corner of the slide that he is no longer on the cross, but he left a piece of his white robe on the cross. And that is a signature that God will always be with us. I'm going to move on. If there are any other comments at this point, I will entertain as we is drawing to a close. Oh, listen to this carefully. Listen to this carefully. Mm -hmm. And if you have this book on your shelf, take it down and read it again. Page 52, page 253 and 254 of Ministry of Healing. Do not talk of your lack of faith and your sorrows and sufferings. The tempter delights to hear such words. When talking on gloomy subjects, you are glorifying him. We are not to dwell on we are not to dwell on the great power of Satan to overcome us. Often we give ourselves into his hands by talking of his power. Let us talk instead of the great power of God to bind up all our interests with his own interests. Tell us of the matchless power of Christ and speak of his glory. All heaven is interested in our salvation. Ah, look at this, look at this. Look at this. The angels of God, thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000 are commissioned to minister to those who shall be hearers of salvation. And that should be us. They guard us against evil and press back the powers of darkness that are seeking uh, our destruction. Please, let, let me read this again. Permit me. They guard by the thousands and ten thousands of angels. They guard us against evil and press back the powers of darkness that are seeking our destruction. Have we not reason to be thankful every moment? Thankful even when there are apparent difficulties in our pathway. Oh, the same God who redeemed Israel and brought Israel out of captivity in Egypt through the Red Sea and dry land. And the same God who redeemed rebellious nation of Israel and Judea. That same God is alive and it has the same power, an angelic host to ready to redeem us. I am so moved always by this hymn. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. His child and forever I will be. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. His child and forever I am. I will be redeemed and so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. I think of my blessed redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love 
is a theme of my song. Oh, I like this verse. I know I shall see, him, see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guarded my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. I know there is a crown that is waiting. I know there is a crown that is waiting. I know for surety there is a crown that is waiting in yonder bright mansion for me. And soon with the spirit made perfect at home with the Lord, I will be. And that is the reason why God is so good to us. That is why he answers prayers because he is so good to me. I know he's daily and minute and every minute and every hour of the day. He is caring for me. Beating back the strifes of evil. And as such, I love him. I love him so. He is so good to me. I praise his name. I praise his name. I praise his name. He is so good to me. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. And I hope, I know, and I pray that this coming be right around the corner. Let us listen. You're not hearing it. What happened? Hmm? Are, are you hearing it? No. 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 Okay. All right. Um, let, let, let me go back up here. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, he is so good to me. He answers prayers, he answers prayers, he answers prayers, he so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He is so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He so good to me. I praise his name. I praise his name. I praise his name. He is so good to me. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. He is so good to Oh, loving God, oh, Heavenly Father, our friend and our Savior and our Redeemer, we are so thankful 
words cannot express. Only a rightful living can express our gratitude to you for your sacrifice on the cross on our behalf. We thank you for the myriads of angels, thousands upon some thousand angels that you have, you have encircling right now your people and your guardian angels that is with us individually, even at this time. We've experienced your presence among us this morning and we give you thanks. Let your angels, and if there is need for additional angels, they are available to surround those who are sick, those who are lonely, those who have physical pain, psychological pain, social pain, emotional pain. Oh God, whatever their hurt might be and the hurts that are taking place now, relieve them to your honor and glory. Bless this simple ministry. You see the challenges, but we are determined to go forward. We are determined by your grace with a passion believing that someone in the church, outside of the church, can be blessed as we try to refine everything, put something up on social media that others can be blessed. Blessed in this effort. Continue to bless us as a, as a church family, as a class family, and we give you all the praise, all the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.